For a while now, I've been feeling like my painting is getting a little bit stagnant, a little bit samey, and I want to remedy that. Welcome to Copying the Masters. Hello, fellow artists of the blue, and welcome to my channel, and also welcome to, well, something different. You see, when you've been painting for a while, you tend to fall into the same paths, into the same ways of doing the same things. It's just something natural, you find something that works, and you just repeat it over and over again because, well, it just works. But what have I been missing by not trying something different? And that's what I want to discover with this new series, Copying the Masters, where I look for tutorials of my favorite painters of all time and try to copy them in the most exact way possible, not just the step-by-step, -step, but also the tools and the specific techniques that they use. And for this first episode, I chose one of my favorite painters ever, and probably one of the nicest persons in the world, Richard Gray. A small disclaimer, this won't be a painting tutorial. I won't be describing each and every single step and I won't be telling you even what paints I'm using. If you want to see the full thing as plain by, well, the person that did it, you can check the amazing video done by Richard that I will be linking in the top right corner and the description. This will be just me talking about the experience of getting into the head of one of the best painters in the world using his same techniques and his same way of doing things. So, let's get cracking. Before we start painting, I want to put into perspective the huge difference in terms of tools I will be using for this video. Richard uses mainly a very small 00 brush. I think in this video he says he's using the Artisopus 00. I don't have that very same brush, but I do have the Artisopus 00 and I also have the Winsor & Newton double 0. I'm putting them together, the Winsor & Newton does make sense in terms of scale, so that's what I will be using. And here's what I normally use, so you can understand what a massive change using the smaller brush is, but at least jumping from a large to a small brush is way easier than jumping from a tiny brush to a large one. But this is an exercise about getting into the mind of another painter, so I need to use the same tools so I can understand not just the house, but also the most important whys of his painting. And a starting up is very simple with this extremely dark grey highlight that to be honest is almost a full layer. At least that's what I did, and it's a great first step to get used to the small brush again. Nothing too complicated or groundbreaking. I did try to do his stippling motion here, but the grey is just so dark and close to black that I just couldn't see any difference and I don't think it matters for this step. Richard's NMM is probably one of the most stunning NMMs in the world, so starting with the armor is very exciting indeed. A massive departure from the NMM I've been doing so far, inspired by Darren Latham and Gareth Nicholas, who take a more stylized approach. Richard is a master of realistic light and likes to define a single point of light for his pieces, and this one is no different. I'm really hoping I can captivate the same atmosphere and light as he does, even if the technique is a bit sloppy. Speaking about sloppy, I am running into some issues with the stippling. I feel like I don't get as much of a gradient and smooth transitions as he does. I end up finding out a way of doing it and it's just having very little thin paint in the brush. You can see me here taking paint off my brush into my thumb and hand, which incidentally explains why a smaller brush is beneficial here. The smaller the brush, the less paint it can hold and thus the easier it is to get the correct amount in it. If I would have used my regular size 3 brush here, I really doubt I would be able to do the micro dots and scratches required to make this work. It's too big and holds too much paint. Maybe I don't have a clue what I'm talking about after all. Go figure. The jump from the second and third highlight on the armor is truly massive and I will confess I found myself mixing an intermediate tone and using it to smooth out some transitions. I could make it work in some places, but in others I felt the lack of practice hitting me in the face like a brick wall. But the choice of model does help here, and a battered and scratched looking armor is actually not a bad look. So I'm not too concerned, but watching Richard do it, it does feel like magic, even though I can understand and see clearly all he's doing. Also his palette looks so nice and tidy, while mine is a mess of in-between tones and stripes used to help unload the brush. I will be honest with you all, I was feeling very disappointed with myself by this point, and in retrospective I was being harsh on myself judging by the final result. A spoiler alert. But I think it has to do with the fact that I'm not used to this technique and way of painting. You see, when I'm painting something in my own style, I know how it's going to look at the end and every single step. I'm expecting it, so I trust the method subconsciously. I never experience the fear of the ugly face anymore, 
because I know how it's going to look and what steps I'm going to do to get there. Experimenting that fear again feels weird, but in a way it feels good, it feels exciting, it feels like I'm breaking some barriers. It's okay to be afraid of trying things, embrace it, jump straight into the fear and move past it. The weapon is painted in completely different hues and I think it's a magnificent showcase that it doesn't really matter which colors you use for NMM as long as the highlights and the contrast is correct. You will end up with a good looking NMM and here the Rustoms unify both metals in a beautiful way and help harmonize everything. I also feel his recipe for light rust is very beautiful and realistic and I will use it again for sure. With the NMM done, I will be honest with you, the rest of the model was a smooth sail, felt like I just climbed a very high treacherous mountain and I'm now just sliding one of those super cool Swiss mountain coasters, having the time of my life, sliding down jodling happily with a fondue in one hand and a bottle of Kirsch in the other. I really like the skin tone in particular, the blue undertones created a very beautiful effect and I will be stealing it for sure for future projects. The brown bits were the simplest and probably the most boring as well, nothing too difficult or crazy, just adding texture to the ropes and the cloth, but it was a great palette cleanser to reflect onto the lessons learned here. It turns out a small branch does have its uses and can be better for certain jobs than a large one. Maybe that's why my previous attempts at stippling went so badly. It did take some time to get into the rhythm and flow of the technique though, but considering the whole mini took me around 3 hours to paint from start to finish, it wasn't really that much time. And that's also another thing, this is fast, like proper fast. When I started with this I programmed two days to film and paint the whole thing and I was done one hour before the ending of the first day, I was shocked, it, yes it's not a big miniature at all and it's quite simple, but still that was for me, a very slow painter, a true revelation. But over all else I felt something hobbying that I hadn't felt for a very long time, the excitement of discovery. That feeling you get when you reach the very highest point of a roller coaster just before all hell breaks loose. And I really encourage you all to do this exercise, not necessarily with Richard, although I highly recommend it. Just get a tutorial from an artist you admire and try to mimic it as close as possible, not just individual steps, but also how he moves his brush and how he works. Push yourself and become a better painter and maybe, just maybe, a better human being overall. It didn't work for me, I'm still as awful as ever but it might work for you. So that was it, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I personally had a blast. It was such an eye-opening experience to put myself into the mind of a great painter by copying his technique and his way of doing things. It really gives you an insight that it's, to me, priceless. As always, if you want to check the original video, it's linked in the description down below. And I will also leave a link to Richard Gray's Patreon so you can check it out and join because trust me, it's really worth it. Apart from that, thank you to all my lovely Patreons and channel members that help me do all these videos. You can see the names scrolling down here. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.